Every team's going to want Shohei Otani. As long as he stays healthy, the bidding's going to start at $500 million, and it's just a question of how high it's going to go. Damn it! I, 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 yeah. Fuck! Yeah, yeah. Like, My card's going down. <laughs> like, like, no chance I can get it. But, like, who do you think's no. the... <laughs> <laughs> who do you think's... Yeah, I know. You should have been something else. You would have... We, we wouldn't be doing this bullshit. Uh! Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kyle... Kyle. Hey, hey, guys! You know what's great? Guaranteed contracts. Yeah, they are great. Sick, I hear. dude. They hear. I think Lamar. Jack- I think Lamar Jackson is going to join the Mets bullpen. I- <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do I see cool. a lighter in your hand and a dip can on the table. That's Zen. I actually quit dip recently. There are American okay. spirits uh, over in there. The, but just for you, I brought these. So ah, uh, uh, let's go. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna light one up here. I'm and, hiding my I, unironic pack of cigarettes. <laughs> Chris, brought, <laughs> Chris brought out the real cigarettes. <laughs> um, hold on, Jeff. Okay. Let me. I'm gonna give you the official review here. You can even tell by the way he lights it. He doesn't, you know. Addicted. You're dead. Oh, <laughs> dead. But it's clean, though. These are like hipster cigarettes. They're Jeff's favorite yeah. cigarettes. Yeah, no additives in there. Yeah. Just Whole tobacco, tobacco <laughs> and water <laughs> Fuck is this, what they dude. say. The ingredients. God damn, Jeff. I'm not drunk enough to do this. Um, yeah, you tried. You tried. It, yeah, we're going to – it's like a – this is like a burning sage or something. You know, I heard in the thing. dugout, the, 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 the <laughs> yeah. Italian when dugout you burn, when you burn a, When you burn an American spirit all the way through, it's like burning sage. Somebody so. like a spirit shows up. <laughs> yeah. So we have Jeff Passan, and we have a lit American spirit in his honor, and uh, we're going to talk about the World Baseball Classic. Jeff, were you shocked at like this year being the year that it feels like everybody realized that the World Baseball Classic exists? And I don't mean this to, to belittle the sport of baseball, but this was huge. Uh, and like, I, I wonder what you think the reason was. Uh, why was it this year? I think it was Shohei Otani. Honestly, I I think he, you know, there's just something about him and about how incredible of a player he is that I think it's taken time for people to recognize just how different he is and how special he is. It's like we've almost taken for granted the idea that there's a guy who plays quarterback and middle linebacker in the same game and it's not like a Pop Warner game. I mean, that's essentially what he is. And I understand he's a DH on the offensive side, but he could play outfield. He did that in Japan and was very good there. And I think when you have a player of that caliber with Otani and you see the numbers coming out of Japan that half the households, you know, 65 million people are watching a quarterfinal game against Italy, all of a sudden you're like... Like, is this a thing? And then Trey Turner hits the Grand Slam in the quarterfinals uh, to beat Venezuela. And the Americans get to the finals. And Japan has the walk-off in the semis against Mexico. And it's like everything was building on top of another. And it's just nice to have some really competitive, meaningful sports after the Super Bowl. Yeah. Like, there's that lull in the sports calendar after the Super Bowl where the NHL is kind of in the dog days of its season and the NBA is winding down. In spring training, it's, like, exciting when it begins, but after that, it's just spring training with a bunch of guys wearing number 76, uh, you know, battling against guys wearing number 83. Yeah. Like, just a bunch of jabrones who are going to be down at a ball <laughs> by the time April begins. Yeah, well, I saw there was a 0-0 tie in spring training yesterday with the Cardinals. So, <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to rewatch that. Small ball, too small. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, you're right. It's like, it's a great opportunity. The timing is right. You know, like, um, and I wonder, I definitely basketball has less competition than U.S baseball right u.s baseball i mean the 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 talent gap is obviously smaller um is is there a country that didn't make noise this year that might uh, that might eventually make noise like where baseball is developing it's an ancient sport for us but is is that game developing anywhere internationally i mean they're trying you know it was very interesting to see like Great Britain mm. have a team, and it yeah, wasn't, was interesting. you know, it, it, it wasn't made up of a bunch of British people. It was people with British ancestry, and the same thing with Team Israel. It was a bunch of Jewish players, yeah. and the Czech Republic. The Czech Republic was interesting. I have no idea if Czech baseball 
is going to ever become a thing. But like, there was an electrician who struck out Otani. Yeah, and and I think <laughs> you know, why why I love that is because I think it shows the democratization of baseball. Yeah, this is a game where you don't need to be the best in the world to necessarily beat the best in the world. Yeah. You could have upsets any given day. And the fact that the Dominican Republic, you know, brought this lineup that had uh, Juan Soto uh, and didn't have Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Fernando Tatis Jr., but could have, um, and, and Manny Machado, and you could go on and on about uh, just the power Julio Rodriguez in this lineup. And they didn't even make it out of pool play. I think speaks to the nature of baseball. The The best teams in baseball history still lose one out of every three games. Yeah. And so uh, the idea that you have this sport where, you know, upsets are, are really ripe, I, I think gives you the possibility for a tournament that mimics March Madness as much as it does anything else. Yeah, I almost got struck out by an electrician the other night at a yeah. softball open. <laughs> yeah. So I can definitely, me and Otani have a lot in common. Well, one thing we don't have in common, I didn't get struck out by an electrician, but I kind of wonder what you think about the Trout, um, Otani, final at bat, uh, overhyped, hyped correctly, or underhyped somehow? I think probably hyped correctly right now, but over time – it's going to become one of those things of legend mm -hmm. and lore that people are going to look back on and say, hey, remember when that happened? Um, there were only 36,000 people in the stadium, but 100,000 people are going to claim to have been there that day yeah. and to have seen it. And this is my 20th year covering Major League Baseball. And I had two conversations that night. One of them, Mike Trout had just sort of finished up his scrum and was walking toward the bus. And I started walking with him and I was like, you know, it, it was a, it was a rough moment for him. Uh, you know, his team had lost and he had, uh, as he said, he had lost round one to uh, a very good friend of his and his teammate in Otani. And I was like, dude, you know, that's like one of those at bats that, people are going to look back on and remember in baseball history. And even in the moment, I think he understood what it meant. But the second conversation was the cooler one because I've, you know, Shohei Otani is media wise, extremely protected. Mm -hmm. Like he only talks uh, every so often after starts, mostly doesn't do a whole lot of one-on-one -on -one interviews, but I happened to be outside the Japanese clubhouse when he walked out and he walked by a bunch of the Japanese reporters and was going toward the press conference room. And I start walking alongside him. And it was our first conversation in English. And I said to him, I was like, that was really cool. And he looked at me, he's like, yeah, that really was. He's, so wait, was he, like, he can, he's got that in his, his arsenal? Oh, absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> if I it's was a, Shohei Otani, I would act like I knew no English and just and just make people that, go through my translator. So, which, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's what yeah. No, that's what he does and that's remember that's what Ichiro did. Do you have you ever seen the Ichiro interview with Bob Costas? Yes, like two rats fucking in a sock or something. In a wool sock. sock. And and of course it's Kansas City where I live during the summer <laughs> yeah. and it's 100% true. True. Um, true in St. Louis <laughs> too. <laughs> Otani's English is not like perfectly fluent at the level that Ichiro's was. Ichiro's eloquent in English at this point. Otani's going to get there, but just having the back and forth with him and, you know, he's still young and I, I don't think he quite can fathom his place in history because he's the person who's actually going out and doing it. Yeah. And whenever you do historic things, like... That's a hard thing to, to wrap your arms around in the moment. I was like, man, I've been doing this for two decades now, and that's the coolest at bat I've ever seen. And and here's why I say eventually it's going to probably be underhyped and why it is certainly not overhyped. That at bat could have ended with one pitch, could have ended with a ground ball to shortstop, could have ended with a gap double, could have ended any number of ways um, early on. But no, uh, it was a strike. Uh, it was a ball, and then it was a strike, and then it was a ball, and then it was a strike, and then it was a ball, and we end up three-two after four consecutive fastballs, each of which uh, were at a hundred plus miles per hour, and then Otani has the balls 
to throw a slider after going four straight 100-plus-mile-per-hour fastballs against a hitter who he has seen do unbelievably brilliant things and who is regarded as the best breaking ball hitter in baseball. If Shohei Otani is not precise with that particular pitch, Mike Trout is going to hit it all the way to the ocean. And instead, he throws the perfect pitch, a sweeper that starts on the inside corner, ends up outside the strike zone, and Trout swings through it. And, uh, you know, one of the coolest things that night for me was Pedro Martinez was on the field after the game. And, and Pedro is, you know, as dominant and brilliant a pitcher as I've ever seen. His 1999 to 2001 uh, statistics are unmatched in baseball history. And, and here's Pedro, like, marveling at what Otani did with that at bat. When you get respect from Pedro Martinez for the way you pitched, you know you did something really, really good. Yeah, Ortiz and uh, A-Rod were up there like, like school children. They were giddy yeah. to interview <laughs> Otani. And, Ortiz uh, is the funniest guy to watch it was, on Yeah, TV, it was really funny. And Ortiz, oh, great. Ortiz was, like, telling jokes and, and grabbing Otani. And, like, he had to wait for the translator to tell him what the joke was. But Otani was like, yeah, it looks funny. <laughs> <laughs> whatever the fuck you're saying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was so, I mean, it was just like so cool to see those guys kind of fanboy over this young international star. That's and I think everybody is. realized the grab. Fanboy, dude. We're, yeah. all, we're all fans. Yes. We're all fans of the physique. We're fans of the face. We're fans of the swing, the way he throws the ball. Yep. He does everything. Yeah. And not only that, he has the, the presence of mind to be out of the media a bit. And I'm not sure what, Part of that is culturally, but I wanted to go back to when you spoke to him in the tunnel when he got past the Japanese media. Do they have the wherewithal to understand we're not going to ask him anything, we're going we're to leave him alone, or do they still bother him knowing that he doesn't do these interviews? Uh, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. There were 2,000 credentialed Japanese media there. And, Golly. Uh, you know, even like the tiniest thing. So <laughs> this this is a funny story. Um we were talking the night before uh, with the semifinal. Um, Munetka Murakami, who hit the walk-off double that night, had said in a press conference, I was actually thinking of bunting, which is like a super Japanese thing to say because, you know, in Japan, the, the, the word that's used is wa. And wa means harmony. And harmony is this idea that the team is more important than the individual, that the team means everything. And if you have to sacrifice something, including an out in a close game, you're going to be willing to go and do that. And Muneka Murakami hit 56 home runs last year. It's the most a Japanese player has ever hit in Nippon professional baseball. He's going to come here in a couple of years. He's going to make 200 plus million dollars. Like he's a dude and he was going to bunt. And Alden Gonzalez, uh, with whom I work, you know, he was just asking Japanese reporters, like, is this translation on the transcript actually right? It, it, like, there's no way that he was trying to bunt. And one of the Japanese reporters comes up to Alden afterward and asks him, so, you know, when, when you were talking about bunting there, um, that, that was really interesting. What are your feelings on that? And I noticed this Japanese reporter is holding his recorder like down by his knee and he's kind of trying to hide it. Mm -hmm. And Alton didn't recognize it mm -hmm. at the time. Like this guy was going to go and turn around yep. and write a story about an American reporter who was essentially shitting on like the idea of bunting. Of, that of sort why. of attitude goes to Shohei Otani and it's exponentially larger. If Shohei Otani like has a hair out of place, it's a story in Japan. Mm -hmm. And and that's what he has to deal with. And you know, God, I think that's why you can understand he's so reticent to talk because every word that that man utters yep. is treated with the seriousness of President Biden talking right yeah. now about international politics. Like, that is how Otani is seen in Japan. So he he's seems like to LeBron. be structurally ready for it, though. He seems to, yeah. have, he oh, yeah. seems oh, yeah. to have the it to handle it. But it's like, it's he, way more than LeBron's magnifying glass here in the States. Would I, would I assume that to be correct? Because that's their national pastime in a way, it seems like. And they're, they're fervent fans, and, 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 and they pack the stadiums, and he is like a god there. Yeah, he, he is like a guy. I mean, uh, Roki Sasaki, who threw the yep. semifinal game and had, you know, 19 of his 20 fastballs at one point were 100 mi uh, plus miles per hour. Roki Sasaki threw a pitch 
in high school at 101.3 miles per hour. It broke Shohei Otani's record for the fastest pitch for a Japanese high schooler. And immediately overnight, Roki Sasaki became nationally known and a sensation. And his nickname is the monster of the Reiwa era. And it like baseball in Japan, I wish baseball here were like it because it's it's the NFL over there yeah. and, and the passion maybe even greater. And so for Otani to be, you know, LeBron's a great comparison because I think the most fascinating thing to me about LeBron James is not how great LeBron James is. It's the fact that LeBron James, 16 years old, the world was told this guy is going to be incredible. And over the last two plus decades, he has not only exceeded those expectations, but has done so with a level of, of class yeah. And generosity that uh, I, I don't think any anyone could have fathomed. Barely. Shohei Otani yeah. is the exact same way. Uh, he is still beloved by his teammates. He's still a good dude. And what I love about him, at the WBC this year, I saw more personality and humor and joy from him than we've seen in any of his five years before. And and I don't know if you guys felt this because you guys, you know, you guys grew up with, with your father, mm -hmm. you know, a star and with him in the media. So you guys from the jump understood what it took. But one thing I've noticed in doing this as long as I have, I feel like when athletes hit 30 years old, suddenly they've got like life under their belts a little bit and they begin to understand the world a little more and can speak to it with some more confidence. And I feel like a Shohei Otani approaches 30 years old and he understands like the responsibility, not just of being him, but just of like generally being a human being in the world around him and his place in it. We're gonna get to know him a lot better, what makes him tick, uh, what drives him, who he really is. And as someone whose job it is to chronicle those sorts of things, I cannot wait for that to happen. Lars Newt Bar, that dude has to be living like a king over there. Like, <laughs> I just, at first I was like, wait, what's this guy doing? And then I I read up on his descent and his name is like Dutch or something like Newt Bar. So I was just kind of confused at first and his mother was Japanese. So he wanted yeah. to play ever since he was a kid. He wanted to play for his home country. And I thought that was really cool. Like, how was that received? And, you know, how big a star is Lars Newtbar in Japan? He's a cult hero there now. Yeah, it's and it's sick. so cool to see. And I, I was I was standing uh I was standing right next to his uh his mom when she was being interviewed on Japanese TV and just seeing the smile on her face and uh, the joy that she had like that's the thing that I think I'm probably going to take away from the World Baseball Classic. Yeah. It's just a really joyous event. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, you can say that Edwin Diaz got injured in an exhibition game and the New York Mets are worse for it. And Jose Altuve got injured in an exhibition game and the Houston Astros are worse for it. And both of those things are true. Like, that's an undeniable thing that, you know, the, the WBC in the end right now is just seen as an exhibition, whereas Major League Baseball is like the real thing. Yeah. But I wrote this earlier this week. Um, you can love the World Baseball Classic and love Major League Baseball. You don't have to choose between the two. If you're a fan of baseball then be a fan of the entire universe mm -hmm. of baseball. And, you know, the like, I, I, I don't know if it's it's my age or, or where I'm at in my life, but I love the game right now more than I ever have before. And perhaps that's the product of, like, the fact that I'm flying home today and my son tomorrow is going to be, you know, he's a freshman in high school and he's going to be playing his first varsity game. Oh, hell and yeah. I'm nervous and I'm excited. And it's just, you know, th there's a lot of baseball in my life right now. And honestly, I feel like the sport is in a really, really good place. Those guys getting hurt, that's just wah for the sport of baseball. You know, that's just them <laughs> sacrificing for He's the sport of baseball. A... <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just, because, Why do you got to do that? Because to baseball wah. won. No, but if the way to justify guys getting hurt is it grows the game internationally. Yeah. It grows the game uh, domestically as well. Like guys I, like me don't watch Major League Baseball night to night, day to day. I've had friends before that, that do watch it, massive White Sox fans. You know, they're watching yeah. every game. 
But the the WBC comes up, and I I may watch a game uh, oh, one night. I may watch two games. Yeah. that's more than I've watched Major League Baseball in the last three years. You know? Yeah. What I mean? Well, Kyle, I'm a Kyle, big Kyle, Kyle, so It's, gonna, I'm a, I'm it's big, great for a guy like me. I'm a big who Phillies is, you know, fan. So, oh, okay. You know. I recognize all these faces on the Dominican team. Venezuela, yeah. I can recognize that guy. What team is he on? I got to Google his name. Yeah. Now I want to go watch the Padres. Yep. Yep. You know, I'm, I've been Thank watching. You. I've yep. been watching Shohei. Yeah. I'm going to continue to watch Aaron Judge and his his chase for you know supremacy in ho- in the home run realm. Yeah, but, but there's this, more to watch. This now. is this is it's a, a, good a nice thing. entry point for people. And you know, I, I wondered like you know, it's like perfect rolling into the season. It feels like this is as much buzz as there's been for Major League Baseball, as we alluded to in a while, in my mm-hmm. opinion, as a casual fan. Uh, and so the question is, uh, you know, piggybacking off the Shohei and Mike Trout at bat, will they be together for a while? Because Otani is a free agent in a year. You know, the, the Angels experiment hasn't gone great. I mean, uh, it's, it hasn't had the highest ceiling. Mike Trout's been to the playoff once. I think they got swept by the Royals. Poor and guy. so the question is, you got the, these two generational players. Are they rotting away in Anaheim? Uh, would it be good for the game to break them up? And will that happen? I think a lot of Shohei Otani's ultimate destination when he's in free agency this offseason depends on how the Angels do this year. Because, like, he got his taste of meaningful games over the last three weeks. And let me tell you, like, yeah. it... It it yeah. it brought Playoff something show, out man. in him that back. I think Playoff had been show, long man. dormant. Yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah. It. And here's the thing: he was a bad motherfucker all of the three weeks. Yeah. Like yeah. every, yeah. you know, he didn't fold under the pressure. Yeah. It brought out the best in him. Yeah. So th- think about that as an athlete. Like th- this thing has, uh, you know, has been dormant inside my body. This desire because the people around me have not been good enough yeah. and now i get a taste of it and it's like you know i yeah. want more yeah. like yeah. I, I i can't i can't fathom baseball without that level of competition now and so if the angels win this year they're gonna have a shot but if they don't uh a trip up the five to the los angeles dodgers is a very Jeez. realistic possibility yeah. and steve cohen uh you know six hour flight away with the new york mets uh after going out and spending hundreds of millions of dollars this off season and uh carrying the biggest payroll in history like by a long shot into the 2023 season, he's going to want him. And, oh, by the way, there's the New York Yankees, who are the New York Yankees. That's who I was thinking. They've yeah. had Japanese stars in the past. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, the San Francisco Giants, after striking out on Carlos Correa this offseason, and the Seattle Mariners with the biggest Japanese star of all, Ichiro Suzuki. Mm-hmm. Like, every team's going to want Shohei Otani. As long as he stays healthy, the bidding's going to start at $500 million. <laughs> And it's just a question of how high it's going to go. Damn it! I, I, yeah. <laughs> Fuck! Yeah, yeah. Like, My card's going down. <laughs> like, like no chance I can get it. But, like, who do you think's no. the... <laughs> <laughs> who do you think's... Yeah, I know. You should have been something else. You would have... We, we wouldn't be doing this bullshit. Uh! Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kyle. Hey, hey, guys, you know what's great? Guaranteed contracts. Yeah, they are great. Sick, here. dude. They here. I think Lamar. Jack- I think Lamar Jackson is going to join the Mets bullpen. I- <laughs> who- who's got? Hey, Jeff. Who's got the better pitching staff? The Mets or the Yankees? Um, the Yankees because of their bullpen. Got it. Are you talking starting rotation? Deep, though? They're deeper. I'm talking. They're they're just their entire they're stable of. The team picture of pitchers, whatever the fuck you call that. The team <laughs> picture. Man. I mean, you know, Jose major. Quintana being out for, for three months yeah. hurts the Mets. Yeah. It, it's like Garrett Cole and Carlos Rodon versus Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander. Yeah. I, I mean, that's maybe like the slightest edge to the Mets there, right. but that's pretty much a wash. But rotation depth, um, uh, I think Yankees maybe by a smidge. They're ve- they're very similar teams actually. Like they're they're both teams that have flaws, and they're both teams that need to stay healthy, and they're both teams that have individuals. Uh, if they get hurt, then it's it's really potentially going to change the trajectory of their season. But I, I think we also have to acknowledge the reality of Major League Baseball now with with twelve playoff teams. Yes, like 
all of this is just trying to get a ticket yes. to October. That's it. And if you get a ticket to October, it doesn't matter how talented you are. It doesn't matter how good you were over the previous 162 games. It's more or less a crapshoot at that point. And I think the, the perfect example of that was the Philadelphia Phillies last year. They yeah. were the worst team to get into the playoffs, and they were within two wins of a championship. Yeah. And that there's, you know, there's frustration in that, Not but like there's the also Eagles. beauty in that. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, well, hey, uh, <laughs> so who do you think's gonna be in the World Series? Give me like a, a little like uh, this. This could this could this is the odds on favorite matchup, and give me maybe a dark horse or a value bet that I might want to place on the team. Uh, my pick this year is Atlanta over Toronto. Mm. It's it's a very like wide open year nice. for for Major League Baseball teams. Like I don't think anyone's going into the season. You point to that team and say that's the best team in baseball right now. It's been the Dodgers in the past, and I think the Padres and the Mets, just because of the way that they've spent and the teams they've constructed, uh, have a lot of hype behind them. I just love Atlanta's offensive depth. They went and traded for Sean Murphy this yeah. offseason, and he is uh, he is really, really good behind the plate. And uh, you add him to Matt Olson and Austin Riley and Ronald Acuna and Ozzie Albies and – uh, any number of others in that lineup. Michael Harris in center field. I mean, you can go on and on, and their rotation solid. Toronto, I've been waiting for them for a couple of years now, and it, I don't know. It just feels like this is their year. But uh, you, you could tell me that the Yankees are going to be in the World Series um, or that the Rays are going to be in the World Series. And I would say, okay, you could tell me that uh, Minnesota is going to back into it or Cleveland, and I'd be like, fine. I mean, the West, the American League West is ridiculous. You yeah. know, Houston wins last year, but uh, Seattle is really, really good, and the Angels That's fun. and Rangers Seattle both being got good. A, What's going fun. on in Chicago? I, I was I'm, I was drafted out of high school to the White Sox, and obviously there's a lot of Cubs fans that, that follow this show as well. So can you give any hope yeah. to the Chicagoans? What we got going on in the uh, the Windy City? Yeah, no, not really. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, well, good. we can keep it rolling. That's then. good. So they're not a dark horse. That's and good. There's plenty of dark horse that you could bet on. Uh, Jeff named a few of them. By the way, Macon's favorite team, Toronto Blue Jays. He's an avid Blue Jays fan. Big Post, Joe Carter He posts their record next to every, you know. 1993, he, best year ever. <laughs> yeah, it was, okay, he was sick. Um, you, know, you, know what I'm you know what I'm really surprised we haven't talked about yet? Have you guys seen any spring training games so far? No, no. I was in Scottsdale last week, and there's a lot of games being played in, in Scottsdale. Okay, you know so saying? you guys haven't seen, you haven't seen a game with a pitch clock then, have you? No, so do you like this yeah, stuff? Like, what's your you favorite this? rule, and give me one that you're like kind of lukewarm on that's going to need some proven out um i think the pitch clock and, and i'm not exaggerating here is going to be the biggest change to major league baseball since integration mm -hmm. now that's a completely different like uh, you know social issue that yeah. uh frankly i mean it opened the doors for among the best baseball players in the world yeah. that uh that we see now to be in the game this is this might be the biggest on field change like since the mound got moved huh. from forty five feet a hundred something years ago. Um, the game when you guys see it is going to shock you. It's going to be like, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. Because when the pitcher catches the ball, he has fifteen seconds to deliver it. The batter needs to be to inside begin the his motion. Box. Yes, to begin his motion. Wow. Correct. Yeah. Um, the batter needs to be in the box and with his eyes on the pitcher with eight seconds left on the mm -hmm. clock. It's, it's like, it's like speed dating for baseball yeah. and, uh, 25 minutes have been cut off the average game time of a spring training game this year. Awesome. And Kyle, you know, you say you, you haven't watched baseball in a while and that's understandable. It's reputation uh, is as a boring game. And frankly, for people who aren't hardcore fans, I can see that because it's not just the length of the game, it's the pace. It's just so slow and it didn't feel like there was any action. So what MLB wanted to do was to speed up the game and to add more action back by limiting the shifts, which, I, you know, I don't care about the limit of the shifts, but you're going to have more base hits because of that. It As a left-hander, I appreciate this. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I like um, I like a lot of the slots over there, and they're unavailable in yesterday's game. Yeah. 
Yeah. It, it made the bases bigger, which shrunk the difference uh, or shrunk the size between them, which, you know, those four and a half inches on bang, bang plays with oh. stolen bases, which, by the inches. way, are going to go up That's significantly. Be- yeah. Well, you are, you're also steel. limited to. Yeah, you're limited to just two pickoff eight moves pick too. Offs. So eight pickoffs, that's good. Yep. Way so to I, go. I, I, I mean, how does like Ricky Henderson feel about this? Because like <laughs> somebody's gonna be, you know, it's like Michael Strahan looking at T.J. Watt breaking it, making a run at breaking his record or something. Like, how does somebody who used to hold like a stolen base record or you know, how do you compare eras now? You can't. It's hard to, huh? Yeah, but it, 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 like we have to understand, in baseball eras, eras are always, always evolving. Whacked, Nobody's yeah. going to steal 130 bases this year. Yeah. Like Ricky's Ricky's record is perfectly fine for now, yeah. but I think stolen bases are going to go up at least 50 percent this year. Yeah. And and here's the thing: MLB wanted action. Stolen bases are action. People like yeah. stolen bases. <laughs> that is like one on one between the catcher and a runner. Yes. It's the same shit we did when we were kids. Yeah. Can I throw something somewhere before you with your legs can get there? Pop time it's these is forty sorts of time. little games yeah. within the game that yeah. are just the best. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing some of these changes. We're baseball guys. Really? We are softball today. guys now. And so my final question to you, Jeff, would be: uh, We are zero and one right now. We dropped a game, twelve uh, eleven, the other night. Too many guys in the lineup. Honestly, there were a lot of guys batting who maybe shouldn't have been batting. Uh, but you know, uh, <laughs> first step back in the outfield yeah. when you hit so, it in the air. First uh, step back. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Doctor Fax is having trouble tracking the ball. We talked about this. Oh, um, what are the what are code breaks in softball to you? I don't know if you've played softball as an adult. But, like, what are some of the things that you're like, hey, that's against the, 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 the law of softball. It might not be against the rule, but the man law of softball. What are some of the code breaks that are, that are, are faux pas in softball? Ground balls. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, softball, softball is for one thing Arms. and one thing Mashing. only, and that's hitting nukes. Yeah. Like, if, if you're not hitting the ball in the air and hitting it hard, you guys are fucking 6'5", Two something. I don't want to suggest yeah. where the two lands, but two something. Oh, you if something right if now? you are not hitting home runs, you are doing it wrong. People yeah. have to make business decisions when the ball's on the ground. Sometimes the decisions are a lot easier when the ball's 300 feet in the air and they can just yes. catch it. Yes. So if I put the ball on the ground, people have to either, you know, they got to go to church yeah. or they got to line up yeah. and, and make a play. <laughs> it, it, Kyle, Kyle here's, here's my question for you. Are you a singles hitter or are you a home run? He hitter? hit some singles the other night. He yeah. broke the code in his first yeah. at bat. But you know it's different. You haven't hit a softball. No, yeah. I at least had last year to like warm up. Like, holy shit, this is a different. I'm a game. golfer now, yeah, and so it's that, a yeah. different ball game. Yeah, but I gotta say, it's fun. Softball's a lot of fun. You can still hit it hard. It's we great. we got little people. skinny wooden bats. That was a weird that's, thing. That's too. weird. They're all. <laughs> I showed up yeah. and there was little. It looked like I was like, is this the T for my driver? They're like, no, no, we use wood bats <laughs> now. And not only that, here's a fucking faux pas for you, Chris. Share the bats with the other team. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't, I don't Do you know that? that? I don't love that. We share the bats, and I don't like the time limit. You know, I would play the full six that's innings. Softball, I don't give a fuck though. about an hour. Um, so, anyways, Jeff. Uh, we'll, we'll hit you back during the season, but we really appreciate the time. The, the World Baseball Classic is awesome. I am all the way in on that thing, and I can't wait. More Americans can't wait for this thing than knew it existed. You know, it's just like, oh, four, but when do we get to see these guys again? Yeah. I think Japan winning that thing is the best thing that could have happened to, to us. I agree. Yeah. Shohei's agree. speech, too, was yeah. great. Yeah. Was great. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, listen, it's coming back in 2026. And I think it's going to actually now be one of those events that people really look forward to. Yeah. And uh, as as someone who loves baseball, someone who cares about the game, um, I couldn't be more excited for that. Well, we're excited to get you on, man. And check out Jeff's articles on ESPN. Uh, he is a writing fool, man. This dude is Good luck to your boy so. tomorrow. Appreciate it. Yeah, good luck to you, dude. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, he's going to need it. He's my child, so there's only so much athletic <laughs> ability in there. Hey, appreciate it, bro. The, that American Thank spirit you. was uh, objectively disgusting. So, Yeah, did you get a, a blue pack? Yeah, yeah what, what kind of pack is. do I want to get? Yellow. Oh, uh, yellows. Yellows all the way. Oh, uh, the yellow is sold out. Okay, next time. Yeah, what are the blues? Fuck. No the wonder blues it tastes are like, like uh, Give me that light. Dark green, menthol, full-bodied taste. So. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder it tasted like shit. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Thanks for the time, bro. You go and enjoy that, boys. Okay, man. See ya. 
Listen to the full podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast streaming platforms. Uh, wherever you want to get the podcast, you can get the podcast. It's pretty simple. New episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Podcasts get pretty wild. This is real tame.